Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's the 1st of October, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 713. And guess what, folks? It's that time of the month. It's the time where we do this. Yeah. Down and then up. So, I believe last month I mentioned how I was essentially going to be let go from my job. And I was preparing for, you know, wrapping up loose ends, making sure all the cases I was assigned to are closed. I'll do all this and that, just making sure. And then in the meantime, because there was really nothing else to do, watched a lot of YouTube videos. Then Uh on the Wednesday before my last day, I get a call while I'm on lunch for my manager saying, Hey, do you want to come over to the the group that's actually still staying around? And I'm like, do you really need to ask? (laughs) Downsides. I don't get Monday through Friday anymore. Mm. Instead, it's, I ended up getting a Wednesday through Sunday shift. So you're wondering now, What's going to happen with the show? You record on Sundays. I also got the 7 a.m. to 4 4 p.m. shift. So, in other words, we don't have the time flexibility, but for the most part, nothing changes. For the most part. You just can't do one of those earlier recording things. So now I don't have to look for a job, which I hate to do. I don't lose my benefits. Uh, I, my pay stays exactly the same thing because it's a oh, yeah. lateral move. Ooh. That's mm-hmm. always a good thing. Nothing, mm-hmm. nothing changes besides what I do with work and what days I do. Well, and the fact that now I start work at 7 a.m. Which means I have to wake up at like five five thirty, mm. which kind of sucks. Which, but because I don't work on Monday or Tuesday now, it means I get flexibility. And even if we run past like ten p.m., which would be approximately the time I should be going to bed in order to wake up at five a.m., right? It's okay. It's fine because I get to hey. sleep in. It's my, it's my weekend. I start off doing this show on my weekend. And then, of course, the next day I have to work because I have to add the podcast, upload the, the non patron feed, blah, 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 blah. I have to do so much work. It only takes me about a half an hour to an hour max, depending on how quickly the video renders. But... Mm-hmm. Also, the nice thing is, is that that patches for the games that I like come out on a usually uh, uh, are are patched through Monday and into Tuesday, which means that the new patch for Final Fantasy 14, which launches on at 3 a.m. 
on Tuesday. I get to play all day on. I don't have to wait until I get home from work. Positives. All positives. Plus, now I don't have to worry about ask, uh, having to worry about getting, uh, being available for my the new dental alignment or to get my te teeth adjusted. Nice. You can make those appointments on Mondays and Tuesdays. Yeah. There you go. Just be like, I think day. it's time for another alignment. Well, uh, honestly, with my last job, all I need to do is just schedule it and just be like, hey, I'm going to be a little late or I've got to be out for a dentist appointment because it was very, very flexible because uh, there was no like immediate things. Things mm -hmm. just tell them when I need to do the thing and it's fine. But I don't have that flexibility anymore with this new job. So, yeah, there you go. So the upside is that you at least have a weekday that you can just kind of plan things and you don't have to use sick time. Yeah. So. Bonus. It's a bonus. I will, I will own that that as a bonus considering a lot of stuff is only during the week. A lot of stuff is mm -hmm. only during like your like work hours. We know this shit and it's fucking sucks sometimes. Um, but that's because all those <laughs> those places want to have normal work hours, right? <laughs> or, exactly. Quote unquote normal work hours. Yeah, but now you can have that ability to um, schedule something if you needed to schedule it, and you can schedule it on a day that you're you would normally be off. You would have that that freedom, which I think is not. And all of my evenings are free. Mm -hmm. Which means. No disruption for anything. Well, except for my Saturday, every other Saturday D and D game, which usually goes till midnight, which can be kind of rough. Yeah. For this case, but that's okay. You can work on that. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <sighs> that's it for me. Congrats. Mm -hmm. Congrats. Damon. Uh, wow. Um, sorry, I had to look and see what I wrote down. <laughs> um, so, still a title holder. Um, <laughs> going into month two, or yeah, month two of holding a title. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, but the main thing right now has been the main thing I enjoyed in September was um, I went to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee with my um, siblings from Onyx, Great Lakes. Um, this was a cabin trip that had been more than a year in the making that um, finally happened. Um, about 16 of us trekked up a very curvy, very awkward mountain road in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um to a um, really nice cabin um, and spent like a weekend. We were there Thursday. We came home Sunday. Um, I had a really great time. Um, uh, it was, I, there are things I would have liked to have had happen. I would have liked like some excursion where we kind of all went somewhere else together, but you know, that's, you know, we can think about that for the next time we do something along these lines. But um, mm -hmm. um, it was very relaxing. It was very restful. Um, it was fellowship and bonding um, with my siblings in Onyx. And um, good time. A good, 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 good time. I will say that I really enjoyed myself. Um, uh on the way back um, home on Sunday, I got to go to Bucky's for my first time. So if you've heard of Bucky's or know about Bucky's, you know it's this Ooh. big, big gas station slash, I don't even want to call it convenience store, but like department store kind of place where um, it's massive. And um, I was not ready. I was not ready. I've seen videos of it. I've seen people visit it. I've heard about it so many times. And I was just like, oh, cool. Like, 
it's going to be this thing and you know it'll be like going again it was like going i felt like it was gonna be like going to a really big like truck stop no it is not it is not um this is a an experience that i cannot nothing really prepares you for it was a sunday afternoon when we left or sunday yeah sunday morning afternoon when we left um and just the drive to get into the to the building was a lot um and then once you're inside it's busy it was busy it was packed it was a bunch of people there were people all over the place and there's clothes and knickknacks and toys and since it was a, you know it was september there was halloween stuff getting already put out um and then there was the food uh, the food was really good um i spent way too much money i will admit but i got a bunch of stuff like i got i got a um um I got a breakfast sandwich, a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit sandwich. I got a three meat um, barbecue sandwich, which had um, turkey, um, the brisket, which if you know about because you've heard about the brisket, and then it had smoked sausage on it. It was amazing. Um, I got some cookies. I got uh, I got some beef turkey, which is really good for me to have. Um, for my diet and stuff, and um, I got a lot of sweet other sweet things, which we're not going to talk about. Um, <laughs> but overall, it was a really good time. I really enjoyed myself. Um, I really, I can, I see why it is such an attraction. I see why it's so busy. Um, I don't think I could do a whole lot of time there because it was packed. But other than that, it was fine. Um, <laughs> just a lot of people. It was a lot of fucking people. Um, and the good thing was you can order like food and have it prepared and give it to you. But they also have all of these areas, kind of like we've talked about the rollers and all that stuff. They also have these areas where food is pretty much wrapped and ready to go. Like you pick it up and you can walk away with it, which I personally love. Because um, oh. I was not about to be waiting for stuff. Um, <laughs> it's too many fucking people. Sorry, love people, but Jesus. Oh, uh, I took that totally as ain't got time for that. Yeah, That's why I was laughing. No. Yeah, it was just a lot. It was just. A lot. Um, speaking of traveling, um, I do have some future travel plans. Um, one of the big things that's happening in October. I have. Been, I was asked to be the contestant handler for the. Midwest Leather and Fetish Weekend. They do a Illinois Person of Leather and um, the Midwest Fetish Contest, I believe is what it's called. It's been a second. I had, a, I had it and then I lost my train of thought. But I'll look it up and let you know. But um, I was asked to be the contestant handler, one of the contestant handlers for that contest. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and in November... Um, I'm heading to Virginia to go to the um, Virginia Bear Contest. Um, so, very much excited. I will be connecting with a, um, a famous buff that's been on the show before, Mr. Zio. Um, I will be um, um, we'll be there that weekend together. I'm literally looking forward to that because I haven't seen him in, gosh, I'm over a year, I think. No, well, February. But yeah, it was good. It's good. It'll be good. And um, yeah, that's been me. Nice. Gary. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're taking a little travel. Yes. You're going to have some time away. Uh, back to something earlier that Jeff had said. Where'd the fuck the year go? <laughs> Three yeah. quarters of it is over. Yeah. 75%. Nine months. It's officially October. It just started Daddy's the not third ready. quarter of the calendar year. 
Yeah, Daddy's not ready. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, sorry. So my month was a uh, half work travel and half miscellaneous. Um, so I got to spend two weeks traveling for work, which was okay. I wasn't a fan of the first week. It was very beneficial. It was enjoyable. It was just a pain in the ass. Um, And it was six days. So that was annoying and tedious. Um, And then the next week I was gone for three days. So it wasn't a full week, but still a lot of stuff. Uh, Yeah, it was just jam-packed full of things between meetings and different stuff and work and all that jazz. So um, because of all the travel, I didn't work both jobs. I just worked the the daytime job and then uh, got back to the swing of things this week. So, yeah. And then I have a little bit of things coming up this month that we'll talk about later. But, yeah, so it was kind of a mixed bag. Um, I've become more active with our union at work. Mm. Um, And that's what I spent my weekend doing. Uh, because we have an office and it hasn't really been organized oh, or taken no. care of in a little while. Um, probably two years is going to be my guess, roughly. Well, because the former long-term president stepped down and we had a different president for about a year, just over a year, I want to say. And then we have our uh-huh. current president. Um, and while our current president is legacy and has been around for quite some time, has a vast amount of knowledge, does not have the time or the energy to do Mm. certain things. And so because I'd seen the state of the office, I was like, hey, I texted them the other day. I was like, can I just come over and help clean up the office? They were like, (laughs) yes. I think they said yes with an exclamation point. I was like, how do I get in? And they're like, I will give you my keys to borrow. And I was like, okay. So, yeah, I spent uh, a whole the, a lot the equivalent of a whole work day there yesterday uh, and three quarters of a day there today. But let me tell you what. What? Uh, it looks a hell of a lot better than it did <laughs> when you walked in. Yet. Well, I mean, I just like. I slightly small amount moved some furniture, um, rearranged some things, sorted some things, added things to trash, found duplicate, triplicate, quad, quintillion, like 12 copies of shit that we certainly don't need. I mean, and you have to understand, like, the legacy of everything of this this local chapter is in this office. Oh, God. So I'm finding things from, like, the 80s, the 90s, the aughts. And I'm like, do we really need this many copies of this thing from a convention <laughs> that nobody remembers? <laughs> Plus their swag. And to see the swag and to see the printed materials change over the years and the change of technology, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah. Binders, 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 multiple file cabinets. I haven't even touched any of that yet. There was a, apparently a desire for a long-term project to digitize everything. And I'm like, I can understand why. Cause we, we have, we have murdered a forest. <laughs> this office with all these file folders. So, yeah. Um, but I feel so much better because at least it has some semblance of being organized. So I'm going to stop again tomorrow um, to take out the trash. Mm. Uh, and yeah. Uh, and hand back the keys. I'm going, we have meetings tomorrow evening, but I might be late for the first one. So I don't want to hold up because I have the keys. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the whole thing. But it's uh, it's been real interesting as a like journey down a memory lane that was not mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> to like discover things. Well, we had a prior location somewhere else. So like in the office is an as a, is a as, honestly, we should throw it out in my opinion, but nostalgia, whatever. But there was an outdoor sign. For the prior location. It's in this office now. It's not relevant. The logo theoretically, I think, has changed. The address has completely changed. <laughs> I mean, it's just like so that was part of my whole thing. Like I'm purging some things. But then I'm also right. holding on to some other stuff. So anyways. Yeah. You know, I mean, I found t shirts, polos, like hats, feather boas, like Things that make noise, things that light up. This is all stuff from conventions, obviously, like the the swag paraphernalia. Mm. Like really, people. Um, 
So it, it kind of reiterated for me. I was like, Ooh, yeah, please don't, please don't send me to the national convention. Cause I will not be a happy camper. I will probably be very greatly annoyed by all oh, the no. like stimulation and the, the rah, rah spirit. Like, Oh, by the way, David, you'd love this. We have two song books. Oh, I kid you not from like the seventies or eighties. Oh Jesus. Yes. Oh no. Apparently we had songs that we sang. I'm like, okay, well that's not happening anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> we will oh, save no. it for nostalgia, but that's they suddenly that, tripped that. and fell into the shredder. I don't know yeah. what happened. Oh no, no, no. I'm not doing that. Oh. I'm oh, being... just, just, just get it framed. But I did, I mean, I organized the desk, I cleaned it up, I, of course, organized the drawers, I organized the bookcase, I mean, I I did a whole lot of things. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I also realized yesterday, I'm like, we need vacuum. Because this office has a carpet. And the the we don't pay for cleaning. Like, Mm -hmm. we, it's an office that we rent in a building. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But like we don't pay for any extra service like that, so I just realized I'm like, oh, hmm, I'm gonna have to. So for a weekend or two or three, I'm gonna go over and like do some stuff and like help move things along. Oh, and then I like um, labeled with post-it notes a lot of things, so that's gonna annoy the shit out of some people, I'm sure, because now <laughs> there's all these like, this is this and this is this and this is that, and it's like all organized. Wait, wait, so yeah. I can find things. Yeah, Not that. God, yeah. I made a hell of a lot of racket because we have like folding chairs, which to be fair at the old location would have made sense because of the old location where the office was, was also, I think where they had the meetings only mm-hmm. at our current place. We have a conference room that is available to us as a part of the fee that we pay for. So we don't okay. need chairs. So mm-hmm. the folding chairs are just stacked in the office, but we don't have a folding chair holder. Right. I want to say or yeah. whatever. A rack, like a rack, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm like, but there's two different sizes, so I had to obviously sort them and like try to compartmentalize them. And they're metal, so they make a lot of noise. But it was the weekend, and there were really no other tenants around, so I don't think anybody yeah. cared. Man. Caught up on a lot of podcasts, listened to a lot of podcasts. Holy shit! Uh, <laughs> so it was there for so long. So yeah, two XP one point um, five. I am um, yes. Well, I I prefer one and a quarter personally, um, as Still my fast. speed. And I learned that from one of our patrons, or uh, one of our members of our entourage. I want to say Eric, maybe he mentioned that like three or four years ago. I think he made a comment about how he tends to listen sometimes at one point five or two, and I listen. I think at one and a quarter. I don't think I go quite to one and a half because it sounds real without starting to get into chipmunk territory. <laughs> so and then <laughs> right right, right. And, and there's always like a math game i'm playing because i look at it and i'm like oh that one's 43 minutes long so that probably means it's going to be about 38 because sometimes like i listen to a podcast and i'm trying to do another activity and i'm timing mm-hmm. it so right. like you know or like today i was like i'm going to listen to a whole i'm going to knock out and get caught up on this one podcast so i'm going to listen like six episodes and i'm like how long is it going to take okay and i do the math so yeah Little things like that. And then it's ironic because I like sort of started in the middle, came to the end on one of them. And then I was like, oh, I have more time. So then I went back and listened to the earlier ones. And then things are out of order. Or they're talking about things <laughs> in the past. And I was just like, oh, no. I was like, well, that's what you get. Anyway, it's when you're catching up on like three months of stuff or whatever. But yeah, I do 2x. And I don't know if it's because of the podcast player, but at least it doesn't, nothing ever sounds chipmunk. Oh, good. Hmm. And sometimes when I slow it down, down to one, it, it's like, wow, you guys are talking so slowly. Well, what's ironic is what if you play, if you used to something faster and then you play it at one and you're like, man, your theme music takes forever. Or like <laughs> interlude or whatever, like, because you're just so used to the other speed and then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's normal. So, yeah, just depends. No, so it was, um, it was a highly productive month. Especially the ending. Uh, I'm just, um, yeah, looking forward to see how things are going to go. But yeah, we're at the last quarter of the year now. And I don't know how I feel about that. I'm, I think I'm disturbed and bothered. Um, mm. Yeah, that's it. 
a bit. Well, you gotta say. For now. It's Janet. <laughs> Gary, who chatted you up? Uh oh, well, I got a a message. Uh so hang on a second. I have a tickle in my throat suddenly. Um Hi Gary, this is Din Din. Uh if I may, I would like to suggest a topic. Extreme kinks, risks versus rewards, and the effects on the community. And if you found the tweet in reference, apologies if you found the tweet in reference too disturbing. And then I included mm. the link. Yeah. Um and I found it interesting, like conceptually as a body thing, like as a a body topic, like mm -hmm. something to to wrap our minds around and discuss. I was like, oh yeah, that could be a thing. Um, and then I clicked on the link. Um, and this caused a whole controversy online. Uh huh. Uh, so yeah. Now, there has been lots of, like, back and forth. There's also been uh, replications, I guess, is the best way to phrase it. There have been claims of, like, medical issues and some other things. Um, so I don't know where the truth lies in this. I'm not going to uh -huh. mention the subject just because I feel it's kind of dicey. And mm -hmm. if we're going to do this topic, we can kind of touch on it then. Right. Um, but yeah, I was like, huh. But I do want to thank Dinton for sending in because it is interesting. Like there's. um, So within kink, we've talked about that. There's like two main um. I guess I want to call them like programmatic kind of like concepts of like how you go about it. One of them is rack risk aware mm -hmm. consensual kink. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why rack comes up is because if, if one was to consider something an extreme kink, like how aware are you of the risk that you're taking on and what will that be? Um, and we've kind of talked about some things. Like I remember when we had um, dozer on, Mm -hmm. We talked about um, bleeding, like yeah, blood play uh, and needle blood play. play. Needle play. Yeah. Um, and that's it. I would think a lot of people would think that's for most lay people, they would be like, that's extreme within the kink yeah. realm. I think people are like, eh, that's one that's up there. You know, that is not something you enter into lightly and you probably don't do when you first get started. Right. Um, if you're interested in, in S and M and, and kink stuff. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Thoughts, Damon? Um, I think it's a great idea for a topic. Um, there's been some stuff if you've been, if you follow the Twitter X versus, especially recently, there have been a couple of things that have been going around um, circling um, the interwebs, as it were. The, the post that Din Din um, pointing us to is one of them, but there's another as well going around um, revolving Folsom Street Fair. There's been a couple of things about Folsom, so but one of those Folsom, one of those things is kind of something that is that almost always comes up when Folsom happens, which is about like um, the quote unquote damage this kink event um, does on our community. Meaning, it's an open, um, it's a space, it's outdoors, and people are encouraged in this area that is cordoned off that you have to have a ticket to um mm -hmm. to get into um um that but you are basically open it's open sexual you know freedom as it were right. exploring kings doing things there's music and all that stuff it's a festival for lack of a better phrase but it's a kink festival um but uh Things like there are things going, rolling around about that in recent in recent like month because that what happened I think a couple of weeks ago, um, but I do think there's a it's a conversation that you know maybe we can get on 
um, and discuss maybe bring um, some of our peak minded friends, you know, onto the show, back onto mm-hmm. the show, have that discussion okay. as well. Yeah. I'm up for it. Yeah. I would be curious to see what others think um, and how they feel uh, about the, I think the dynamic really turns into outside versus internal perception. Um, because I feel like if you're not a member of the community, then you have one very specific viewpoint where if you're within the community, you might have one or one of a couple of viewpoints on certain activities. So, yeah. So thanks (laughs) for the idea. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great idea. (sighs) Okay. Oh, wow. That's a list. Um, Yes. (laughs) Uh, Jerry, what's been so, going on in the Facebooks? Yeah. Uh, well, we want to thank Kyle Bryant for liking us. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, and then the following list of individuals. Apparently, we had a very busy September. Uh, <laughs> followed and liked us on Facebook. Hey. I'm not sure what's going on over there, but we're getting lots of traction. I- Hmm. I'm I'm very curious. There's something going on, and I'm I'm trying to because I'm noticing like separately from Facebook. Like I'll be, I you know I also um work one of our um another site from the leather group I belong to. Our 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 Facebook group, our Facebook page is not active. Like we we haven't posted anything on there in a while. It's just more there. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to do a couple of cross posting, but we don't do a whole lot. But we still get likes all all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but who knows what's going on? It's probably a Facebook thing. I don't know. Anyway, with that being said, Gary. <laughs> so we would like to thank the following individuals who followed and liked us on Facebook. Here we go. Uh, Paul Zaleski, Nava Salian, Nava Salian. Timothy Schultz, Alex David, Adi Top, Steve Duval, Pratham Prasad, Travis Boogie Rutledge or Rutledge, Russell Mars, Alex Joe, Lance Cunningham, Claudio Dominguez, Eric Nelson, Francesco Gieri, Marco Van Meer written Mir Mirton. Sorry about that. Uh, Neil Hossein. Fizzy, Clayt, uh, Raphael Oscar Perez, Stanley Guy, William Fagan, Kenny Chu Clements, Saroja Saroja, De Pastori Griminge, JJ Mann, Danny Pollan Jr., Guy Edward Cox, Simon Gville, Stephen Riccoli, Giovanni Durbin, Maury Cacharo Retro, Almar, H. Lewis Gray, Van Hafter, Hani Abohani, and Joseph Moore. Nice. I'm not even sure how many that is. It's got to be at least two dozen, right? Something like that. Or closer to 36. Three dozen. All right, something like that. Anyways, lots of new names. Not even sure who all of these folks are and what's happening. Welcome. But thanks. (laughs) We appreciate it. Damon, what about over at YouTube land? <laughs> Ooh, we got some comments um, from um, COL706, which was our Nerd Culture Den versus Now show, um, at Mr. Re DX1N. It says, Re Nerd Hard, Fist Emoji, Weekly Magic the Gathering Game since 97, Geocaching and Bear Hunting. Lovely. Hmm. I don't know Yay. if that's uh, bear hunting as in the animals or bear hunting as in the humans. I'm going to go with the latter. Yeah, and I was like, is it really hunting or is it more like catch and release? <laughs> I mean, that's right. that's fair. Just... That's fair. Just, just, just saying. Just saying. 
Um, and then from our COL 707, which was our LTAS, our favorite porn tropes, at Jordan3636 says, does a cub not refer to a child? Um, yeah. No. Not this type of cub. <laughs> not this type of cub. No. Um, Jordan, if you're listening, or maybe we can respond. Um, cub is a subgenre of the bear community, which we're all a part of. Um, we consider cubs usually are con- usually cubs are considered um, younger slash not as mature or um, chosen identity of people usually smaller in frame or stature to a bear, which is usually a big burlier type person, um, not children. Um, not. Yeah, I, I and in regards to us with the podcast because we've aged with the podcast. Yes. Uh, I think we've definitively kind of looked at it from like it's the mindset, it's the label that you choose. Basically, I mean, the bear community has a lot of that. Um, I mean, the whole MSM LGBTQIA plus community has a lot of that. Um, so the concept of like cubs out loud as individuals like speaking their minds. Um, but in terms of like cubs, like as reference to a child, as in like a child of a bear, I understand where you're coming from. But yeah, like David said, no, not not in this particular case. But if we're misunderstanding, feel free to comment again. Get a hold of us. Yeah. Send an email. There's lots of options. We have we have various uh, older older shows where we go for this label. Yes. And last but not least, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I have voicemail. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hi, I was just calling to find out if y'all have ever done a podcast about Skeleton Crew or Demon Doctor. They're creations of Joshua R. Pangborn that are really bear friendly and big guy friendly. They're awesome. And I just thought maybe a lot of the folks listening to your podcast might be interested in finding out about it, how to watch it and things of that nature. Just, just a suggestion. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Um, one note and comment to this is if you go to our YouTube page, you will notice at the bottom we have a bunch of channels that we recommend and those include side sidekick productions which is the group that does skeleton crew and demon doctor so the short answer is yes yes <laughs> we have um, had joshua on a handful of times but joshua since i know that you're kind of a regular listener and observer you're welcome to come back and talk about your current <laughs> project stuff. Um, yes. You know, because he's and actually Joshua has uh, joined us a number of times when we've done our live events, like our special mm-hmm. type stuff for either birthday parties or gaming things. Um, I think he's attended a couple of the Jingle Mingles. So when the holiday season comes, so yeah. But by all means, uh, we appreciate you like calling and leaving a voicemail, first of all. Yay! Yay! We had an episode or two where you came in to talk about Skeleton Crew, I think. Yes, I'm pretty sure I can probably find those numbers. Yeah, I was going to just look because I'm like, I know he's been on at least twice, twice I want to say. Not twice. Um, not four. Uh, but, oh, well. Um, so Doctor? COL 484, which was the Skeleton Crew update, and then COL 438. Mm-hmm. Um, and understand if you didn't know, because that was almost 300 episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. So those were in, that was in 2017. The, the 438 was in October 2017, and the 484 was in October 2018. So. It's been a handful uh, of years. Yeah. We might be due for another one. You know, it'd be nice to have Joshua on again and have that conversation again and. Nice little chicken. He yeah. had a, he had the, the musical series. Was it a series or was that a movie? 
What was that? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of his other productions besides Skeleton Crew and Demon Doctor. There was one that was musical. Oh, oh I can't remember what that. Yeah, my brain is failing. Me. Well, if you if you want to know, you can check out um, Sidekick Productions, mm-hmm. and um, they're friends see, of the podcast. You know, find out more about us. They're friends of the podcast, and we're friends of theirs. And a series regular of Joshua's. I don't want to call them besties, but <laughs> they've become quite well acquainted with each other. Is Nakia, mm-hmm. who is a guest from a very long time ago in first generation, I think. Um, uh, also, we're going to wrap to the voice uh, season one. And was one of the first people I met when I moved to Austin. Oh. Why? Because the bear community is small when you least expect it and pay attention. <laughs> so many people know so many other people or are connected in some fashion. So, yeah. But we'll, we'll uh, see if Joshua is available because it is now October. So there might be an update from him mm-hmm. or in the near future. Do a little check in. Gary, what's been going on over in the Patreons? Uh, well, I just want to thank our patrons yet again for being supportive of us uh, at the Cubster level, Charles W., Daniel C., and Michael K. At the Uber level, Dave T., Lee, Michael Q., and Tim S. And finally, our buddies Lloyd G. and Michael V. Thank you all for being supportive of the podcast. Uh, over the years, thank we you. greatly appreciate it. Yes. Uh, as we like to say, it helps keeps the lights on. Um, with that stuff and we're coming up actually on our uh kind of anniversary um situation where we typically send out some things so uh i know we have a couple of things that are owed but we'll be sending out some some stickers uh kind of reward items to some folks so be on the lookout for that stuff this month keep a lookout And uh, tell us about the month in podcasting. Uh, we had four episodes this past month. 709 was the what's going on, obviously, for the month of August as we let off September. Then 710 was Landscape of Relationships. Dr. Edward Angelini Cook joined us once again. And this time we talked about self care. How do we take care of ourselves, love ourselves, love yourself. on ourselves, you know? that stuff um and then 7-eleven was a let's talk about <laughs> sex tips for better selfies uh cubs has joined us and we had a conversation about like the kind of the classic tropes of how people take selfies and how to make better choices choices yes <laughs> um, you know, the background, paying attention to what you're focusing on, lighting, um, not really super in-depth, like geeky things about like composition and like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because most people take selfies now with like a just their cell phone. But there are some things that you can do to take a better image uh of yourself, especially if the point is to show off whatever is the subject matter. And I learned that I can use my Apple watch as a, uh, to, to check on the, uh, my framing. Yes. So if you have an integrated system between a uh, watch and your phone or possibly a tablet, um, and your phone, one of the, the, some combination of that, you could do a timing mechanism and you could also like see as a monitor, what the camera is seeing, and then you can get better positioning. That's kind of fun. <laughs> I know, know it works between Apple Watch and iPhone, but I'm assuming that there's a similar thing for like the Android watches and Android phones and such. So Yeah. Does not um, require watches. Correct. And then uh, episode 712 was State Fairs of 2023 Part 3, where we talked about three more states uh, and the 
food items that were either new or award winning. Her, I guess, the guests or the public, the voting committees of these <laughs> things, whatever they may be. The future, the, the, the best of the best. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. The best that was available. <laughs> By the way, that's a long episode. I had yes, no was. idea how long that episode was until it posted. And then I was like, wait, surely Jeff made an, an error. And this is like the full thing nope. for the patrons. And then I had to go compare them. And I was like, oh, dear, we went on we talked for a lot about food. I, I, I didn't even mention anything to him when I was editing the show. Either. Yes. I just posted it. Food, food, food. Yeah. So that would that was a good car ride episode, I would say. <laughs> when you need to pass the time. I'm about to go um to Chicago. Greyhound. So yeah. I'm really gonna, I might have oh to yeah, absolutely. Go. Bus ride, trade ride, car ride, yeah. anything to like eat up almost two hours. <laughs> if you want to just listen to our dulcet tones in the background as we talk about what we want to put in our mouths. No. Anybody mm, wants to complain about that episode, do keep in mind that we do not put a time limit on our shows. I mean, it's called the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length. Yeah. It could be short, it could be long. It happens. Like a foot long, or not a foot long. Come again? Wow, that was not quite what I meant to say. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I mean to say it, but that wasn't the inference. I'm just, you know. I was, I meant like, cause when I say like a, you know, foot long, that, you know that how long a foot long is. I meant to say like a hot dog because um, there are, there are smaller hot dogs or longer. It was Correct. meant to be a penis joke. Never mind. Anyway, keep going and move on. Yeah. Anyways. We're good. Moving right along. Are we? I was yeah, looking at the doc and I was like. No, no, we're good. All right. In any case, it's time to talk about pee. <laughs> All right, enough of that. We're already going to get a strike for the opening, so don't worry about it. It's probably fair. Damien, what do you got? So I actually have two, and they're both videos. Um, the first one is from Wrecked It Ralph, um, and it says, sorry, I had to. Um, and it has at Boss Pocket Otter. And it's a video of a, of, I'm, I'm assuming Wrecked It Ralph is the, is the one <laughs> on the bottom. The bigger guy. And he, the bigger guy, and he literally lifts up boss po pocket otter and proceeds to like a stick and it looks like they're on a trail in a forest um maybe near a lake something like that maybe and at a campground or something like that yeah and it's just it's probably a campground as i listen to the music wow them. yeah and just sort of picks them up and goes to town <laughs> okay that's hot I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna say it like like first of all big dude picks up littler dude and then just like you know promptly mm -hmm. puts peen in mouth and like mm -hmm. what's funny though is that boss pocket otter <laughs> yeah. is like and this is how i die like yeah. I, I just thought that was a funny line yeah. where he was like i'm gonna get dropped like yeah i'm gonna you know get dropped out of my head i'm gonna have a cranial fracture uh you know yeah but instead, like, no, like, dude knows what he's doing. And both of them are naked. And all I was like, I was like, but, but now there's an invitation, like. For someone to join on the bottom? Yes. <laughs> Do you need some additional support? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could have some. Oh, yeah. You, oh. Is it a counterbalance? I think it would be a counterbalance if you had someone, like, holding. Um, um, wrecked at Ralph's, um, you know, waist and our hips 
and just like go, you know, you can still suck them, but you would have to be like that other person would have to probably be like on their, maybe on their knees, but maybe like up and on their, um, stretched out to like put their feet, plant their feet in a way. Anyway, it's, it's possible. He just like, needs to stand next to a picnic table. I mean that too. Because then you can just you think. you the collective you whoever you are <laughs> whoever us, you might be could <laughs> could lay <laughs> out on the table yeah yeah doesn't even have to be a picnic table could be a massage table could be a bed mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah anyway. I just I really did I I, I found this I, a while back and I really love it I think it's you know I I would never be able to be in either person's position but it's yeah it's no. hot. yeah like. And I love how, um, for me, it's the the shift in the um, otter's like um, um, facial expressions, and he goes from like probably being a little scared and terrified to um, acceptance. <laughs> this is how I die. Well, he and then he gets himself. enthusiastic, and right? He, I mean, yeah. yeah. And Once he, he realizes he's not going to die with a heart on, I mean, you know, like. <laughs> then he starts enjoying himself very much so. Yeah. I mean, that's why I was like, that's hot. Like, I would have just liked to have been a witness. Yeah, it's anyway. kind of fun. Yeah. So that's one of two. My second one is, um, I called it, I titled it Happy Labor Day in Venice. Um, and if you don't recognize the um, this is from Cobear 1812 But if you do not recognize him, this is Venice Cub from the old days of Bear Films. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's been off and on on Facebook. Facebook on Twitter slash X whatever, um, and I've I've I happened to I think through Patreon I caught a video of this one, him and caught the the Twitter handle and I was like oh I'm immediately following him again because he's a just a long term long time crush of mine and. It's just a video of um, our th- the famous Venice Cub, our infamous fam- Venice Cub, um, giving us a Labor Day wink. Wow. Oh, we well, know. yeah. There is no complaints about what he posts. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't necessarily post frequently, but that's okay. I, I mean, I will be fully honest. He's not been, like, on my – wow. I, I'll say it. He's not been on, my on like, my bucket list uh-huh. of, like, people that I want to have sex with, but I appreciate <laughs> very much, <laughs> like, you know. So, yeah. And knowing that I'm two degrees separated from him mm-hmm. because I know a person who knows him, I'm just like, oh, okay, you know. Yeah. And again, it, it's um, it's always good to see um, some of your um, like twenty or two, two, your aughts like porn, you know, you know, fap the things you fap to like see them still growing up and being still as hot. Um, he's one of a few that I've um, found not like recently, but I've, I've found on Twitter and I follow. Um, there's Stephen Ellis. There's, I just found recently, Wiley Edwards. Um, there's a few others that I've just randomly, you know. Like, oh, there you are. Kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> are you all enthralled? What's going on? Yeah, I'm <laughs> making sure that I share this with you. Oh, because oh. I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm sure you will appreciate it. Oh, well, I went back through his timeline. 
So, ah, and saw ah. something I did not know. Ah, right. Hmm? Nice. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of fun. I didn't share with that's you. really fun. Anyway, hold on, and I'll share it with you. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it's only fair. I know, but like, you'll understand in a moment why I shared it specifically with Damon. Um, Second is how are you sharing? Uh, on Twitter dot com. Okay. All right, so that was highly enjoyable. Yes. You're welcome. Ah, that. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just sent it to Jeff, so that way he Ah. also was aware of the post from a while ago. Got it. Uh, So I uh, have one from Husky Cub 88 that says, well, I did have to put clothes on at one point. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Which I just thought was funny. So it's a a collage, a collection of images, uh, and he has a nice smile, nice bright eyes, you know, beard, he's a bit hairy, um, you know, and to be fair, only one of the pictures has clothes in it uh, that are on him. (laughs) (laughs) So there's some interesting poses uh, in the bathroom, um, mm-hmm. you know, when you have a moment and a phone and it's just like sitting there. And so you take different stances and whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, I like uh, Adam Smasher's uh, comment. You should be banned from wearing clothes. What? Stunning. Yeah. Society has weird rules, you know. <laughs> like this one. I am not. I will follow uh, modesty. Yeah. Craziness. <sighs> Moving on into the links. David. I'm the only one with links? What the fuck? Oh, how? <laughs> I don't normally have a link, but here we go. Um, I actually just started watching this today, but okay. um, it is the... Netflix series, um, the culmination, the 30th anniversary of Power Rangers. And this is the latest season, maybe last season of Power Rangers um, in the 30-year history that we know it as. Um, um, And it's Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. Um, it is a, com- a continuation of the last season that was on Nickelodeon, which is Power Rangers Dino Fury, which was done by Hasbro. Um, and then I believe now it is owned by Netflix. And they did this series. And there is rumor, speculation, possible, factual, that this is the last season of Power Rangers, meaning from the original series back in 1993 to now this is the last in that sort of long over arch situation mm-hmm. and then it's going to be retooled and rebranded i don't know about rebranded but retooled um at some point i believe by netflix there's been talks about it but i don't i don't have i don't have any other articles or anything else to support this. I'm just going on what I've read and seen through like Twitter and um, Facebook things that I follow. Um, and the reason I'm enjoying, like I'm, I brought it up as a link. Uh, I've, I will, I've been a Power Rangers fan for a long, long time. I've, I stepped away when it moved to Nickelodeon. Um, I would watch it here and there. Um, but never really got back into it as much. Um, but I see a lot of recaps of, of the shows and this Dino Fury, the seasons before this one, um, the series 
I really it brought me back in it were in a way. Mm-hmm. And this season, if what we've been getting is accurate, there's a lot of nostalgia vibes in this season. You're going to see a lot of stuff being brought back from like very early on and all that stuff. And one of the things in particular that they're bringing back and who has been one of the stars in these first couple of episodes has been Billy, um, played by David Yost. Um, and if you follow history of Power Rangers, you know um, for a long time, um, David Yost did not want to have anything to do with Power Rangers because at the time, again, rumor has it, um, he was um, um, bullied on the set of the show when he was on Power Rangers for being gay. Mm. Um and that's just again. This is one of the rumors. He and he's probably he's admitted to be, this being a thing, but it's never been the only reason why he left the show. Um, but um, he came back for the 30th anniversary um, um, show that was on um, Netflix, and then he's at least in the past couple of episodes he's been a star in this new, new season, and it's rather interesting because. In this season, for the first time ever, we have an a confirmed LGBT um, Power Ranger. Um, the Green Ranger, um, Izzy, um, she is in a relationship with a woman, um, Fern. And um, and it like they've they've shown it on the show. So it, it is it is very much it's not like coded or or hearsay or assumed or whatever it has actually been seen on the show they've hugged i believe they've even kissed on the show so it is a thing so which is rather interesting considering david and his history so um i do plan to try and watch the entire season i believe the whole season is up at this point on netflix and if it's a what i've seen and of spoil i've been spoiled on a little bit it does seem like this is a finale of power rangers mighty morphin 30 years of history kind of Mm. i mean it's gonna be interesting to see because uh this is like a combinate they're trying to mash up like rio soldier and and uh q ranger Mm-hmm. And Q Ranger had twelve Rangers. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how they make it work. Make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's apparently they're it's, gonna use the uh mecha from Q Ranger mm-hmm. and like the suit stuff from Rio Soldier. Somewhat. So one of the big things for this season in particular is they have created their own suits. If you've seen any of the previews um, of them, like not the first couple of episodes, but later on, which I've, you know, I've seen, I've been put on, um, there have been pictures and they are in different suits than the um, Japanese um, version, the Japanese Sentai, uh, which the, um, sword is based on the swords are based on. So it will be interesting. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, what I've seen so far, um, it's okay. I don't. I do not think they're going to have twelve rangers. I don't believe they're going to have twelve rangers. Yeah, probably. Not. Um, um, they've had ten. They did. Um. Um, Dino Charge. Um, they used that series, and they had ten in that series. But they focused on like five, six, and then the others were sort of more like reserve or came in for an episode or five, you know a few and here and there. So it could be done, but it, I don't think they're going to do that for this um, Cosmic Fury season. Um, but it's out there. And if you want to see it, if you want to check it out, um, I do recommend it. 
if you are a um, longtime fan of Power Rangers, what I've seen so far is it's really good to like have those vibes and, and nostalgia pieces. Um, I don't, you do kind of have to know a little bit about the previous season of Dino Fury to get into this series, but they do a, they do a very brief, quick recap right in the first episode. Um, somewhat catch you up to speed but not really it 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 you, it glosses over a lot of stuff so you do mm. kind of have to know some about it but give it a shot you might be surprised I or just, you can go i just wish that around. there it was it, there was a more easy accessibility to the super sentai series yeah yeah I think we would all. I'm not sorry, love saying TV. aired it on television, but <laughs> yeah, there there was. I was watching a on. Um, gosh, I have sling, and for a while we had an uh, we had a station that was showing some of the older, but it was actually the Sentai. Um, when I saw it, they were showing. Um, the Mega Ranger, which was um, Power Rangers in Space. It was the Japanese Sentai for that one. But, and it looked like they were showing episodes like constantly. So it's possible that it was going to move forward. I don't watch wrestling as much, so I didn't really get into it. But Maybe it's it was one of those where it was a channel. Maybe it was uh, Shop yeah. Factory, because I think Shop Factory has the uh, American license right now. Yeah, it's possible it was Shop Factory. That sounds about right. But yeah, there you go. Anyway, Power Rangers. Check it out on Netflix. I don't have anything for the past month. Uh, the main thing I've been watching is Ahsoka on Disney Plus, which I already linked last month. So I didn't think I needed to repeat <laughs> it. Uh, the last episode is this coming week. Aha. Ha. There we go. So, I've very much been enjoying it. Most likely there's going to be a cliffhanger which is confusing people because there's no confirmation that there will be a second season. Isn't that how it always is? Well, but there is a planned movie mm. that's bringing together several different properties of late that have all been on Disney plus. So they're, they're Avengerines. Mm. That's how it's been described. Um, and they have a significant challenge in that um, Ray Stevens, who plays Balin Skull, passed away unexpectedly earlier this year. Mm. And so one of the semi-main characters like, uh, is not going to be around. And nobody knows what was already planned for that character if they mm -hmm. survive the season. Right. So if anybody doesn't know who Balin Skull is, um, that would be the hot Sith Lord looking daddy Bear Jedi, Gray Jedi, not really sure. That hasn't been fully explained. He's a mercenary. He has a beautiful gray beard. Um, yeah. Hold on. What's his name again? <laughs> the character? I don't, something. I need something I can type into Google. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll look it up. Um, yeah, so, and it's funny because I know somebody who's a big Star Wars fan uh, out in um, California, and when the first images came up for Balin, I was like, I was like, please tell me you are cosplaying, and it was funny, and they were like, oh, I've already, like, um, you know, decided that I'm, I'm definitely doing this, and I was like, yes, Sith Lord Sorry. Daddy. Ah. Found him. <laughs> yeah um thanks yeah he's just... <laughs> it's called wikipedia sorry <laughs> yeah see it shows you how much you ever looked up information about star wars i am not a big follower of star wars i will that's admit. okay 
and I don't and I don't normally go to this website. I've been to it once or twice before. I'm not going to lie, but like it's just it has a gorgeous headshot of him, like a beautiful high res image. So I was like that that one right there. Um, yes, but yeah, no, he uh, and I didn't really know who Ray Stevenson was before from other properties. He's been in, a, in, a, in quite a number of things and several people have said they've enjoyed him being in um stuff so you know i was like okay like that's <laughs> cool i was just excited that we had a, a you know a older daddy figure um you know and my my thing is like this image i'm sending to you guys right now in skype is is like from the trailer like preview of the season it's actually in like the very first episode i think um uh-huh. Oh, but wow. there's right. There is nothing more epitomous than like choke me, daddy, um, <laughs> like meme energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what? I'm just saying that. you've you seen the Darth even... Vader memes, haven't you? Yes, I know. But still, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Oh, that, that I mean, if I had my choice, I mean, I, I, would, I would pick this one, you know. Yeah. Nothing against Darth, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, just when you see the face. Well, that's yes. what helps. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Anyways. There's plenty of ways to contact us. <laughs> Pop over to our website, CubsOutOfLive.com. Shoot us an email to CubsOutOfLive.gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail like we got this episode. At 361 will Talk, that's 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter.com, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place in the URL where you can like, comment, and subscribe. You can also join our on trust chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. By now, when we're planning on recording these shows at and on our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. The various accoutrements, such as the Consent is My Foreplay shirt, just a logo shirt, and various different styles. Oh, Zazzle, Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of those designs were designed by Smashy. Find more of his work at tpublic.com slash slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, where at certain levels you might actually get rewards that we order from it, from Zazzle. You can also send us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can find us on the various podcasting platforms, which you can play at 2x speed or less. <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. Don't forget to uh, rate us, review us there. The more more people will like and rate us there, uh, the higher up in the algorithm, the more people will find us. You can find me anywhere in the internet as box at box, puppy box, cut box, something or other, where you can see that I reblogged all of these tweets that we talked about today damon if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me as theater cub 79 that's t-h-e-a-t-r-e-c-u-b 79 on most bear related sites or on facebook you can find me as pup underscore umber on twitter that twitter is definitely not safe for work if you want the safe for work one you go to dma gamer 79 gary if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And with that, take it out, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.